moral duty to reverse what she saw as Britain's decline into socialism and to fight communism in the world. Now, in Margaret Thatcher, Britain's Iron Lady, former colleagues and members of her family speak about her unique personality and her political legacy too. Margaret Thatcher was Britain's only woman Prime Minister. She was obsessed by a single idea, to restore the country to the greatness that was, in her view, its birthright. I can't bear Britain in decline. I just can't. We who either defeated or rescued half Europe, who kept half Europe free, when otherwise it would be in chains. I look back on the Thatcher government as one of the pivotal governments of the 20th century. I'm very proud to have been in it. And I think it actually did set Britain on the path of being a modern industrial nation, able to survive and thrive in the modern world. For all her faults, she will go down to history as a real great prime minister, one of the greatest prime ministers that this country has, has had. She had an enormous impact on Britain. Some of the things that she had to take on when she came to power, the fact that the trade unions were far too powerful, taxes were too high, inflation was out of control, she slayed these problems one by one. The ladies not for turning. <laughs> But her brand of conservative radicalism alienated and upset many and brought discord in its wake. Many of her achievements are still argued about to this day. It was absolutely tough, wasn't it? Which factor is most? Margaret Thatcher was a person who couldn't see or didn't want to see the unfairness of what she thought to be a, a renewing ideology. In the Thatcherite period, the rich did get richer, but what made it exceptional was that the poor got poorer for the first time in over a century. She excited great hatred amongst her enemies, more than I think, any other politician of my time. She's not the only one who aroused great enthusiasm amongst her friends, but I can't think of any other politician of my time who excited so much hatred She's one of those rare politicians about whom it's impossible to be agnostic. I think for decades to come, people will have a view about Margaret Thatcher for or against. And when you think of the procession of blandness that goes through political life, it's quite a thing for that um, grocer's daughter to have achieved. Margaret Thatcher was born Margaret Roberts in 1925. She grew up in Grantham, Lincolnshire, above the family's corner grocery shop. Her father, Alfred Roberts, a conservative council and sometime mayor, took on an almost mythical status whenever she spoke of her childhood. It was he who laid the foundations of her political career and gave her a burning sense of ambition. <laughs> Margaret went up to Oxford in 1943 to read chemistry at the All Woman's College, Somerville. This earnest young woman worked hard at her chemistry and joined the Conservative Association. Her political ambition was becoming more focused. She campaigned successfully to be leader of the Tory students and began to think about her future. When my mother asked her what she wanted to do when she left Oxford and she said straight away, I want to be an MP. She didn't say more than that, just I want to be an MP. And of course she went for it. In 1947, the future Prime Minister began a career as a research chemist. In her spare time, she studied to become a lawyer and joined the Young Conservatives. 
she caught the eye of Dennis Thatcher, a rugby-loving businessman who shared her right-wing outlook. Anyone else but me? In 1951, Anyone aged 26, no Margaret married Dennis. It was to be one of the great unions of modern politics. At 27, Margaret gave birth to twins Carol and Mark. When the twins were six, Mrs. Thatcher began to look for a safe seat from which she could launch her political career. As a pioneer career woman, though never a feminist, in a conservative world, she didn't find it easy to be selected. It was the association members of Finchley in North London who recognised her talents. This was the final meeting of the selection, and I went along with the thought that if there's a lady there, I wouldn't vote for her because they didn't, you know, um, they didn't have the same standing as men in those days. Until I got there and heard her speech and answering questions, and she completely changed my mind. There just was no hesitation in my mind that uh, she was the one for Finchley and Fran Barnett, and so I voted for her. To the new parliament, the Conservative Party returns victorious. To an extent, few When Harold Macmillan won the general election of October 1959 for the Conservatives, Margaret Thatcher joined the ranks of his backbenchers. She was 34. In 1965, the Conservatives voted in a new leader, Edward Heath. Edward Heath's government lurched from crisis to crisis. In a famous U-turn, it ditched its earlier radical policies. In 1974, there was a national coal strike. The country was reduced to a three-day working week to save fuel. A nation working under candlelight was the final blow to Heath's government. It's almost impossible these days to imagine what Britain was like before Thatcher. Britain in the 1960s and 70s was, in European terms, a failed state. Uh, Ted Heath felt the country had become ungovernable. Uh, the word strike was in every page of every newspaper almost every day. Uh, public services really were collapsing. This country was a mess. Behind the scenes, right-wingers like Mrs Thatcher started to think about a new type of economics to heal Britain's woes. They wanted to challenge the post-war consensus and turn back the ratchet of socialism. We were defeatist at home and an object of pity abroad, and something had to be done. Following the turmoil of the three-day week, Ted Heath went to the country and was defeated. Although he hung on to the leadership of the Tory party, forces were at work to remove him. To the surprise of many, Margaret Thatcher took the initiative and declared herself the rights candidate for the leadership. She was the only one in the cabinet who didn't feel inhibited by ties of loyalty to Ted Heath. I never count my chickens before I know I've got enough chickens to count. <laughs> Initially, there was a certain amount of prejudice against her standing. Not quite smooth on the top. She, she, she was teased as being twin set in pearls and a rather strident blue rinsed story lady. Would the electors vote for a woman, particularly one with some pretty radical ideas and ones which were a clear break with the past and with, with Ted Heath's prime ministership? There's still a little bit sticking up there. You can see it in the reflection. I think we probably all went home that night thinking, I hope we've done the right thing. Astonishingly, when Conservative MPs voted in the leadership contest, Margaret Thatcher managed to beat Edward Heath by 130 to 119, an extraordinary achievement. For the first time, the Conservative Party had a woman as a leader and the country a female in line to become Prime Minister. She appealed directly to her faithful followers, the party rank and file, who loved her no-nonsense right-wing philosophy. 
Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I presume this is to enable us to sweep Britain clean of socialism. A series of strikes in 1978 and 79, dubbed the Winter of Discontent, had done terrible damage to Labour government and gave the Tories a real chance of victory at the 1979 general election. Mrs Thatcher campaigned as would be expected without cease, playing to the cameras up and down the country. Open and a bit of playground and hypocrisy. And and it's all voluntary, dear. Are you prepared to give something to it? Because and I will. Her mission was clear and simply stated. I just hope that they will take me as I am for what I can do, not as man or woman, but as a personality who has an absolute passion for getting things right for Britain. I can't bear Britain in decline. I just can't. We who either defeated or rescued half Europe, who kept half Europe free when otherwise it would be in chains. And look at us now. I just hope they'll look at that and say, does it matter whether it's a man or a woman? Isn't it just best to get it right? It didn't matter that she was a woman. In the general election, she led her party to a convincing victory. Her majority was 43. Here they were welcoming Mrs Thatcher, the first woman to lead a party in a general election in Britain and now set to become Europe's first woman prime minister. Well, at a quarter past four this morning, there were jubilant scenes at the Tory central office in London. So what are your plans now? Oh, but I'm staying here. We're having a marvellous party. <laughs> We've got quite a lot to celebrate already. On the 4th of May, 1979, Mrs Thatcher, aged 53, arrived at the door of number 10. I would just like to remember some words of St Francis of Assisi, which I think are really just particularly apt at the moment. Where there is discord, may we bring harmony. Where there is error, may we bring truth. Where there is doubt, may we bring faith. And where there is despair, may we bring hope. There is now work to be done.